Okay, so we are going to talk about properties of waves. All the properties we are going to be discussing, I have listed them for you. So make sure you have that in your notes. So the properties we are going to be discussing are reflection, refraction, diffraction, polarization, and what? Interference. So let's start with what is reflection. So when we say reflection, it simply means the bouncing back of a wave. Bouncing back. Bouncing back of a wave. That is what interfere that is what um, uh, reflection is so bouncing back of a wave now imagine you have a ball that you throw over a wall you see that that wall does not absorb the ball okay so the ball bounces back when when it hits that surface now the same thing will happen to a wave when it strikes a surface so if a light wave for instance strikes this surface it bounces back if it bounces back it is called what uh, reflection Okay, we are going to talk more about reflection when we talk about reflection in light. But for now, just know that reflection simply means the bouncing back of what? A wave from a surface. Now, on the other hand, you should know that all waves can be what? Reflected. So whether you are sound, whether you are light, whether you are transverse, whether you are longitudinal, um, electromagnetic or mechanical, all waves can be what reflected they can undergo the property of reflection then on the other hand when we talk about refraction refraction has to do with the change in what direction of a wave due to change in speed as it crosses the boundary between two media okay so refraction is the change in direction of a wave due to change in speed as it crosses the boundary between two what media Remember, we have talked about media before. We said a media is a, a medium through which a wave can what? Be propagated. So imagine I have water. I have the surface of water. This is water, okay? And then this is air on this side. And then what happens? You see that when a wave enters into water, you see, this is the boundary between air and water. Now, when it gets into water, it does not continue on this part. It does not continue on this part. What happens to it? It is going to be refracted, what we call a refraction. So, the wave is going to be refracted. So, once it crosses the boundary between two media, it doesn't continue in its original part. It is refracted. Okay? It changes in direction. So that change in direction is what we call what? Refraction. And take note, I said that refraction occurs due to change in what? Speed. Jump. We ask you that. So take note of that. So refraction occurs due to change in speed. When that wave is in air, it doesn't travel as fast as when it enters water. So there is a change in what? In speed. Because of that change in speed, the direction of the wave will change. Now, when refraction is occurring, you should know that refraction occurs, whenever refraction occurs, the speed, V, remember V is our speed, and also the wavelength will change. So, whenever a wave is going from one medium to another, the speed and wavelength will change, but frequency remains constant. But frequency is constant. Frequency is constant. Frequency is what? constant so the frequency does not change so the the velocity and wavelength might change when they are in air and also change when they are in water but the frequency will remain what unchanged so take note of that it is a jump question now we should also know how it changes because when you say change change can be anything change can be it increases change can be it decreases so does it increase or does it decrease now it depends on how the wave is going if the wave is going from a less dense medium to a denser medium, if it is going from a less dense medium to a denser medium, then the velocity will decrease. Velocity and wavelength will decrease. So if I'm going from a less dense medium to a denser, the velocity and wavelength will do what? Will decrease. Okay? Then if I'm going from a more denser medium to a less dense medium, the velocity and wavelength will what? Increase. Yes, it will increase. So make sure you are paying attention to what we are doing here. So let me give you an example of less dense to denser medium. This is a very good example. So from air to water is from less dense to denser. So what will happen to the speed? Speed will decrease. 
what about a uh, what about water to glass what about water to glass so you see water is less dense than what than glass so because of that the velocity and wavelength will also what decrease then when we say denser to less dense denser to less dense means that for example let's say we are going from glass to water glass to water or let's say from water to air if we are going from water to air or from glass to water what happens you will see that the wave will the um the speed and wavelength will what will increase because it is going from a a, a, a greater density to a smaller what density that is what happens now in all these things we have said this thing happens for all waves and the exception is sound so sound is the exception take note of that in jam they will ask you which of the following types of wave does not obey the rule i just told you now so what are the rules i told you i said if it is going from less dense to denser medium what will happen to the speed and wavelength i said speed and wavelength will decrease if it is going from denser to less dense i told you that the what the speed and wavelength will increase so the person the only person that does not obey that rule is what is sound wave so sound wave is just the opposite of what we just said so for sound when sound is going from a denser medium to a less dense medium instead of having an increased speed it has a decreased speed so the speed of sound will decrease if it is going from a denser medium to a less dense medium but if it is going from a less dense medium to a denser medium the speed will increase okay the speed will increase so for example in air the speed of sound in air is about 340 meters per second depending on the temperature if we look at um, water in water the speed is about 1500 meters per second to 2000 meters per second and then in metals where it runs at about 5000 meters per second so you see from air to water to metal the speed is what is increasing that is what happens in the case of what sound now well, let's talk about the property of diffraction let's talk about the property of diffraction so when we talk about diffraction what is diffraction we normally say that diffraction is the change in wave front of a wave so we say change in wave front of a wave as it passes through a narrow opening as it passes through a narrow opening so that is what diffraction is okay so whenever a wave tries to pass through a narrow opening and there is a change in wave front of the wave it is called diffraction so what does that mean so when we say wave front we can simplify this word as shape so you can say that diffraction is the change in shape of a wave as it passes through a narrow what opening now imagine what you would what would happen to your head if you try forcing your head through a very small opening imagine the opening in your burglar proof okay in those your burglar proof doors imagine the kind of opening there and you try to force your head through it first of all your head will be it will be very difficult for your head to pass through but if you force your head and your head was able to pass through it you see that your head will be compressed because that burglar proof will shape your head to match it so that is the same thing that will happen to a wave so imagine we are walking in a ripple tank and in that ripple tank i have a slit i have a narrow slit a narrow slit is just an opening okay this is an opening this is a slit i have a narrow opening then on this side as you can see i have rectangular waves these are rectangular waves so you see that the waves are straight now look at the length of this wave now look at how look at how long this wave is then look at how small this opening is so this opening is small now this wave is not smart to know that it is too small to pass through this opening so what happens it will force itself through it and if it forces itself through it look at what is going to happen you see that this opening will change the shape of that wave and this is now becoming what spherical wave so this is now spherical wave so this is what we call diffraction this is spherical what wave as that wave tries to pass through the opening this is what we are going to have 
Okay? Now, the key point you should know is that diffraction occurs when the opening is small. When the opening is small. You see that if I expand this opening, the wave will just pass through and nothing will happen to each shape. Okay? So just know that diffraction occurs when the opening is small enough. Okay? That is that about what? Diffraction of wave.